Welcome back to the channel guys. So with the 250 all wrapped up and all the little bugs worked out, it is time to break it in. So I'm gonna set up the suspension first, set the sag and then break in the engine. The engine is completely fresh from top to bottom. And so we're gonna need to run it through some heat cycles and I'm gonna walk you guys through that. And also I do have a couple little things to bolt on the bike as well. So let's get started. Now the very first thing I'll check when getting a bike ready to ride is the tire pressure. So I run 12 in the rear, 14 up front, and I'm using about the most basic tire gauge here. Now on the suspension, I haven't done any spring or valving changes yet, so it's completely stock internally, but I am going to set all the clickers to the standard position. So on the forks, up top is the compression. Stock is 15 clicks out from all the way in. And the rebound is down here on the bottom. And that is gonna be 15 clicks out as well. So I'm going all the way in on the clicker until it stops. Right there, and 15 out. And then I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And then we've got the rebound on the bottom. For the shock, we have three different adjustments here. We have high and low speed compression. So high speed is gonna be the big nut, low speed is gonna be the clicker, and then down here is the rebound, right there. So we're gonna set the high speed compression at two turns out from all the way in. Low speed compression is gonna be eight clicks out, and for rebound, that is gonna be set at six clicks out. So we're all the way in, and we're gonna go two full turns out. Right about there is two. It's kind of a bummer this hole in the side plate isn't quite centered on the shock. That's the one thing I don't like about this restyle kit. And then for the low speed dampening, this is gonna be eight clicks out from all the way in. Now I'm gonna take a quick minute and explain to you guys the very basics of compression and rebound when you're riding the bike. So compression on the fork or shock is how soft or hard the shock compresses or fork compresses or shortens. And then rebound is how fast it rebounds or lengthens. For the shock, I explained how we have a high speed and low speed compression. So that relates to the speed of the shock or how fast the shock shaft is actually traveling not the speed of the motorcycle. So an example of a high speed incident would be a braking bump or a really hard landing. The shock is gonna compress quickly. And then an example of a low speed compression would be going off a smooth jump face or say going through like a roller section. And then if you're gonna be making adjustments, only do one or two clicks at a time and only make changes to one component at a time. So don't make changes to your forks and your shock at the same time. Just keep it really simple. And while we're on the subject of suspension, I do need to set the sag on this shock. That's very crucial to having a good balanced bike. And I've got a new tool to try out for setting the sag. This is a sag checker from DRC, available at Rocky Mountain. So I'm excited to test this thing out. So basically how this works is you have this piece that slides in the axle pop it up onto the swing arm, tighten down that screw to lock it onto the swing arm. Now we're stuck onto the swing arm pretty good. And this piece comes all the way up to the fender. So you're gonna wanna go directly straight up to the fender. You want that to be vertical. And then this piece just clamps right onto the fender. Now, before I set the sag, I'm gonna briefly explain what exactly the sag is. So, sag is how much the rear end compresses when your weight is on the bike. And that's very important for having a well handling bike. For example, if you have too much sag, your bike is gonna be choppered out, like the rear end's gonna be low, and the bike is not gonna turn very well. And if you have not enough sag, the rear end's gonna be kinda of high, kinda of like a stink bug and it's gonna be really unstable on high speed sections. Now to start off, we're gonna take the marker, bring it all the way down to the bottom of the tool. You gotta to make 100% sure that the wheel's off the ground when you do that. Then we're gonna pull the bike off the stand, throw on some boots, a helmet. Basically you want 
all of the weight on the bike as if you're going riding. You also want to make sure the bike is topped off with fluids and then we're ready to check the sag. Man, it's been a long, long time since I've worn boots. Kind of forget how stiff they are. Now, hopefully from here on out, this will be a pretty regular occurrence, buckling up some boots. So I'm gonna pull the bike off the stand, nice and easy. Try not to compress the chuck too much. And I'm gonna roll it over to the cabinet. That way I have something to lean up against. and then sit on the bike in a neutral position and try not to rock it too much. So right about there, pretty settled in. Get off the bike slowly. And that's it. Now the distance from the marker to the tool is gonna to be the amount of sag we have. And the number we're looking for on this bike is going to be 103 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and bust out the micrometers for this. So we are at 116 millimeters. What is that, like 13 millimeters too much? Yeah, looks like I'm a little too fat for this bike. Now to tighten up the sag, I'll need to tighten down the shock spring a little bit. This plastic kit makes it a little bit harder to get to the spring. I don't know if you guys can see this in here, but the top lock nut on the spring is gonna have to be loose. And then we can tighten down that spring a little bit. So to tighten the spring, I'm gonna spin it clockwise. So I'm gonna keep checking the sag and adjusting the spring until I have 103 millimeters on the sag checker. After a few adjustments, I've got the sag down to 103 millimeters, right where I want it. So now it's time to tighten up that lock nut and we can call it good. Actually, there's one more measurement I'm gonna do here and that is the static sag. So the static sag is how much the bike compresses or sags under its own weight. So I can check the static sag with this tool as well. I'm gonna push the marker all the way down, pull the bike off the stand and let it compress under its own weight. So after I recorded this, I realized there's a better way to go about it than I showed in the video. You're going to want to pull the bike off the stand, push the back of the bike down, and then let it slowly return. This will eliminate all the stiction in the suspension. And then once the bike has settled, push that marker on the sag checker down to the bottom, put the bike back on the stand, and then measure it as shown in the video. Now the number we're looking for here is 30 to 40 millimeters and this number will tell us if the spring on this bike is too light or too stiff for my weight. We are at 35 millimeters so that's within the range. It's a little on the higher end. Now if the static sag was more than 40 millimeters that would indicate the spring on this bike is too stiff for my weight and I would need to go to a softer spring and vice versa, if the static sag was less than 30 millimeters, the spring would be too soft. Now my thoughts on the DRC sag checker tool, works pretty good for setting the sag yourself. I would definitely use it again, super easy to use. I'll drop a link down below to where you can get them. Now for you guys that don't have the tool or you wanna set your sag manually, I do have a free article available that I wrote up for you guys, so I will drop that down below as well. Now let's bring this beauty outside and start breaking in the engine. This is where it gets fun. So I'm gonna break her in using a series of heat cycles. Now I've already started the bike a couple times, but I'm gonna act like I'm going from the very get-go just to show you guys the entire process. For the first heat cycle, I'm gonna fire it up and run it slightly above idle, kind of revving it up and down a little bit until the coolant temperature starts to go up slightly. So luckily I've got this coolant temperature gauge. I'm gonna watch that closely until it starts to creep up and then I'll shut the bike off. I saw that gauge move just a little bit. So now I'm gonna let the engine cool for about five to 10 minutes and then run a second heat cycle. For the second one, I'm gonna bring that temp up a bit more and then let the engine cool for another five to 10 minutes. And then we're ready for the third cycle. I 
I was able to get the temp a little over 100 degrees this time. Now I'm gonna let it cool for about 10 minutes. Now, if you don't have a temp gauge on your radiator cap, you can always use an infrared heat gun. Let's go ahead and check the cylinder head. We are right around 100, so it looks like that gauge works pretty good. So I'm gonna let it cool down to about 70 or 80, and then run the third heat cycle. I love playing with this thing. It's fun to see what temps are at. Case is at 70 degrees, 77 see what the pipe is at what the heck I think those must cool down pretty quick 47 am I reading this right let's see what this side of the engine is 67 what about the fuel yeah I guess it is around 55 60 degrees out here now what about the silencer 50 yeah, this thing cools down pretty quick. Now, one thing you can do while you are waiting for the engine to cool down is go through, check some of the bolts, especially on a two-stroke, things like to vibrate loose. I already noticed the master cylinder bolts were coming loose up here. Had to tighten those up. So I went through, checked all the plastics, the seat, the engine covers here. So yeah, pays to stay on top of those things as everything starts to break in. It's amazing how well this thing idles and just how responsive it is. Yeah, those Lectron carbs are no joke, dude. They freaking run crisp. Yeah, let's go ahead and check the cylinder head again. 130 so normal operating temp is around 200 i'm gonna bring up to 180 and call it good so i was able to get her up to 180 i'm gonna let it cool down completely check all the fluids retorque the head and then tomorrow morning i'll be able to go rip it around and do the final heat cycle before i take this thing for a burn i should probably check the spark plug honestly i should have checked it after a few of those heat cycles just to make sure but I'm pretty confident this thing is running good Kind of hard to tell for sure. We don't have a ton of time on this plug. You can see a little bit of brown or bronze coming through on the inside of that plug. So I would say we are golden, literally. Now, one thing I didn't talk about is the fuel mixture. I'm running 32 to one, which is what I would typically run. But say if you're running 40 to one or leaner, I would use 32 to one mixture for the first tank. So while the fluids checked out fine, I retorqued the head to the factory spec. And at this point, we are ready for the fourth heat cycle. So we're gonna go ride the bike around for about five minutes. You can actually ride the bike normally at this point. The engine is pretty well broken in, but the only thing you wanna stay away from is lugging it. That actually puts more wear and tear on the engine parts than just riding it normally. all warmed up and ready to rip. We're just gonna punch it around for a few minutes and uh, I actually need to bed in the brake shoes as well for the brake pads. So to do that I'm just gonna do a couple hard stops, get those pads heated up a little bit, about five times. I think that should be good. I'm also trying to break it myself too. I haven't been on a full-size bike since uh, 
like June of last year, so a good solid 15 months or something. So far, it feels really tight. Everything seems good. Pop on the pit bike track and cruise around a little bit. the uh, the big bike track I have out here it's all weeded in right now I haven't ridden it in probably two years here's the big tabletop holy crap I can barely see where the track is anymore back here and I think oh, it goes a little further yeah this makes me kind of sad seeing this track just completely grown in let's see I think it pops back in over here My bike's gonna be full of weeds after this. Oh my gosh. So it goes over this little single, kind of dips down into this hole here. Goes back over to another single. Got a right hander. goes into this pretty fun little double. This jump was a ton of fun on the 145. Man, this bike is running clean. I'm, I'm loving it. We got a little, couple of little switchbacks here. I can't even tell where the track is anymore. This is all just basically left memory right now. Alright, so this is where it kind of winds back toward the front of the track. We have a huge, huge sweeper. I think it makes the whole 360 degree turn here. And then we get into another little double here. This one's fun. Well, any jump is fun, isn't it? I can't even see where I'm going. Holy crap. Yeah, I would not hit that with all those weeds. And then we go back into the tabletop. So, yeah, the track is about 
I want to say like a mile. I'm gonna get a dozer out here pretty soon and clean it up. And uh, I'm gonna shorten the track a little bit just because it's so, I don't really like having something a ton of maintenance or something that I have to maintain a lot. So I'm gonna shorten it a little bit, but yeah, should be a fun little track. I think I'm finally feeling strong enough to hang on to a, a full-size bike now. So we'll be back in business pretty soon here. I should actually go do a couple little starts out in the field just so I can kind of wring his neck a little bit. doing starts it's so much fun I'm probably gonna loop out though probably shouldn't jinx myself click it up in a second right there oh my god I just bogged out big time that might have been third gear bike might be geared a little too too low to be uh, doing second gear starts but yeah it seems like it's running awesome good little break-in session Well, boys, pretty excited with how this thing is running out on the track. Should probably let it cool down for a little bit, though. I was really giving it the berries on those starts. Probably not the best idea with a completely fresh bike, but you know what? Couldn't resist from having a little fun. But I wonder what we got the temp up to. Let's say around 150. That's pretty good. Not overheating it or anything. So at this point, I'm going to let it cool down completely. Do a compression test, check the plug again, check all the fluids, and then we're pretty much all broken in. So we're all cooled down, time to do a compression test. So we're gonna be looking for around 150 to 200 PSI. And all that depends on how well it's broken in and also the gauge itself. Spark plug still looks pretty good. I was barely able to get that gauge hose stuffed up in there. Didn't have to pull the tank off, luckily. Now, what we're gonna do is hold the throttle wide open and push down the kill switch and see where we end up. So we ended up right at 150, and that would indicate the engine's not quite broken in all the way. I'm gonna do a couple more rides, come back and test it again, and hopefully we see around 175. So every gauge is gonna read different. Some of the cheaper gauges might read a little bit low, but as long as you're within that 150 to 200 range, I would say you're fine. And looking at the spark plug a little bit more, it's not really showing a ton of color, which could indicate a lean condition. Now the bike actually runs really good. It's not showing any signs of it being lean. It's not bogging out not idling high, and it does produce a good amount of smoke, and there's a little bit of spooge coming out down here. So I wouldn't say it's super lean, but just to be on the safe side, I am going to pull the slide out and adjust the metering rod here on the Electron. So I've got the slide out of the carburetor, and this right here is the metering rod. And how you adjust it is by turning it, turning it in, richens the mixture, and turning it out leans it. So usually you want to go, I would say a quarter or half a turn at a time. I'm going to richen it up half a turn this time just to be safe and then read the plug, see where it's at, and go from there. On a side note, these stands from Works Connection are super nice. Never really appreciated having a parts tray until now keeps everything off the ground and prevents you from kicking it around. These things are also super stable, really heavy duty, got a nice rubber pad on top. 
I'll drop a link down below to where you can get them. And I've got a solid discount code for you guys as well. To save 20%, use the code CAM20. Now to adjust the metering rod, you physically have to turn it. Now Electron sells a tool to do that. Now I don't have one, but in a pinch, you can use a towel wrapped around the rod and a set of pliers. The rod is actually made of some pretty hard steel, so you're not gonna damage it. And you wanna make sure the rod is fully extended. You don't want it pushed in like this. That's not gonna do anything. So we've got it all the way extended. Gonna give it a half a turn in, just like that. Now the flat portion of the rod needs to be facing the intake of the engine. I'm gonna push the rod in, twist it around, set it back in, make sure it's fully extended, and we're ready to put the slide back in. Just went for a quick burn, pulled the plug out, and I'll show you what it looks like side by side with a new plug. You can see the inside of the plug on the left definitely has a lot more color. It's got that tan shade to it, so I would say it's running pretty solid. And you can tell the difference when you're out riding too. Definitely feels a little bit more crispy. Now as far as breaking the bike in, I think we're all set. I'm gonna do another compression test in a few weeks once I ride the bike a little bit more and see how that looks. I think it'll jump up a little bit. But yeah, pretty pumped how everything is looking. Now the next thing I'm gonna work on is I am gonna trim off this little piece here on the shroud. If you stand back, yeah, I think it looks kinda of dorky on there. Honestly, I think it'll flow better. This whole piece will actually line up with the side plate and I really don't know why they put that on there. And another plus to trimming that off is you'll be able to see the carbon tank underneath a little bit better. Now to get this thing smoothed out, I ended up using a file and then Finished it up with 320 grit sandpaper. Probably wasn't the best idea to use a hot knife on this thing. Left a lot of rough edges and I had to do a ton of filing to get it all smoothed out. So on the next shroud, I think I'm gonna use that saw. So the saw actually ended up working out pretty good, especially once I torched the blade, cut right through that plastic. So yeah, pretty excited with how these came out. Smoothed out pretty nice. Now that actually looks pretty good. You can see that carbon poking through right there. Really digging that. And I think the whole shroud just flows better with the side plate. And in my opinion, I think it looks more factory. Now the only thing I'm worried about is your pants catching right here on this edge. A Little bit of a sharp angle, it could smooth it out a little better. But honestly, when you're riding, your legs are more rubbing right here where the air box is. But overall, I think it was a success. Thought I'd give you guys the heads up on a few new products I'm releasing. Got a few new shirt designs. This one, you can obviously tell, pretty stoked on. Got the logo on the neck there, nice subtle addition. But these things are super soft. You guys will love them. So got a few other new designs on the website as well at primemx.com. And I've also got these black shock bumpers too. When I was building the shock for this bike, couldn't find anything that wasn't yellow or brown. And so I pulled some strings and now I've got some available for you guys. I'll show you what they look like on the bike. You can see a nice black shock bumper down there. None of that brown or yellow nastiness. And I'll go grab a stock bumper to show you guys how ugly they are. So this is a new OEM bumper. They've got like a yellow color to it. But as soon as they start getting dirty, they turn brown. Yuck. And these black bumpers are actually colored all the way through. I've got one here that's cut in half. You can see that color goes all the way through and it's not gonna fade, not gonna chip off or discolor. So these things are the ticket for a good looking shock. So I've got black shock bumpers for CR125s and 250s, 02 to 07, as well as CRF 250s and 450s all the way up to 2020. So pretty cool deal. I'll drop a link down below to the bumpers as well as the new shirts. Now the very last thing we're working on for today is pretty freaking cool. We've got a case of titanium hardware from Tusk. So we've got a few different colors here and sizes. These are the kind of factory color they call it. Where it's got the rainbow color. A couple different sizes there. And the ones in the case, if I don't spill them, are black. And then all these bolts got some real nice head on them. They're all drilled out for safety wire. Looking pretty trick. 
absolutely love the look of this stuff. Now let's figure out where we're gonna put all this bling. And I've heard this number before, I don't know if it's completely true or not, but if you swap out every piece of hardware, every bolt on the bike for titanium, you'll save about six or seven pounds. So pretty impressive. Got the ignition side done, looks pretty good. I wanna do all the case bolts as well. I'll have to buy the right sizes for that. But sadly, I didn't have the right size bolts for the clutch cover and water pump. Those bolts are pretty long, so I'll have to order the specific bolts for that. But overall, really digging how much these bolts spruce up the bike. So that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you all in the next one. Got a really interesting video coming your way. So stay tuned.